two, three, sync. Hey dudes, Brad the Guitologist here. It is time to check out some cymbals. Uh, if you're curious like me on how to date your vintage Zildjian cymbals, stick around and we're gonna look into it. A fella recently sent me uh, a bunch of drums and in, the, in with these drums came a few old vintage Zildjian cymbals that we are going to figure out how to date. I found a uh, really useful article on Reverb.com. Uh, I don't find a lot of things with Reverb useful to be honest with you, but uh, this looks pretty darn useful. Um, this is by a writer named Matt B. Uncardi. I hope I've pronounced that correctly because you've done some good work here, Matt. Okay, so before we get too much further into this, uh, I want to <laughs> give a disclaimer here. I filmed this whole video that you're about to watch without really doing all that much research, to be honest, and I probably should have done a little bit more. So the article that I reference here, this um, Reverb.com article, it is not the real source of this information. Uh, this guy is citing information uh, that is taken from uh, research that others did and he really didn't give them any credit. I don't see any citations uh, anywhere. I'm sure it's just an oversight um, but you know generally speaking this is not good journalistic practice to use someone else's work uh, or to cite um, academic research uh, without um, giving a citation that leads back to that research. So uh, it really would have been good if he would have included something here that, that references that research. Whereas, you know, as it is, it looks like this is research that is, you know, stolen. Um, so it's kind of plagiarism if you don't reference where you got this information. And the only way I even found this out was I came down to the comments because I was curious myself, where did he get this information? And I was looking for a comment that told me. And sure enough, there is a fellow here named Steve Black who says that he covered it a bit more on his website. And he talks about uh, how his site has more information. And, and indeed, if you click on this, black.net.nz slash avitas.html, much, much more information on this website uh, than you will find in that reverb article, which frankly is a pale shadow of what's on here anyway. You know, he even uh, references where he got a lot of this material from this gentleman named Bill Hartrick, uh, and then also all of the other stuff that he has provided, um, stuff on ink logos and Avitas trademarks. And if you go to this Avitas gallery, which is really nice, it gives you a lot of different stamps. It breaks down what the, uh, Air, the I guess it's Arabic or is it Turkish, whatever, uh, what all these symbols mean, what the three dots mean. Uh, I even noticed when I was looking at these that there seemed to be a couple more dots like above this little nine looking character right here that don't didn't seem to exist on some of the logos that I have. So just much, much more information is referenced here. Like right here, yeah, you see there's there's a couple missing dots above that little nine right there. Just lots more that you can glean from this website. So I'm going to link uh, the, this original source material down in the description. So if you're gonna research any of this for yourself, uh, definitely um, do yourself a favor and reference the original source material. This black.net.nz, he's got all this stuff pretty much laid out here. Probably be nice if he wrote a book on this subject so that people who uh, collect Zildjian symbols would be able to reference this. They made symbols that were marked Zingian, so he gives explanations of those stamps. This one's got a Ludwig stamp on it. Allegian, uh, which was for kind of a low low end market, made by Zildjian. Zilco is another one of their trademarks. So if you come across any of these symbols and it's like, oh darn it, I was hoping it'd be a Zildjian. Well, it is a Zildjian. In much the same way that, you know, Gibson's made some guitars like Kalamazoo. There's one marked Constantinople. Here's one marked both Zilco and Zildjian. So yeah, much, much more information here. You've got a USA with no dots here. But yeah, just definitely if you're gonna research this, do yourself a favor and go to the real source of all this material. The history of Zildjian, they're over 300 years old uh, as a symbol company with their origins going back to Turkey. It started in the 1600s sometime. And about 1920, uh, one of the family moved to Massachusetts and uh, he wasn't even expecting to take over the company, but some problems happened back home in Turkey and it ended up, long story short, he ended up taking over the company and moving it to the United States and producing Zildjian symbols in the United States starting in the 1920s. Uh, in the late 1970s, two brothers split off. Uh, one of them continued to make Zildjian and the other uh, younger brother 
started the company Sabian in a different factory. So um, now that you're caught up on the history of Zildjian very briefly, let's look into how to date your vintage Zildjian symbols. Again, they started producing in the United States along about 1929. I have no idea. Uh, and this, this doesn't go into how to date anything previous to the 1920s. So we're just going to start our dating here where this article starts uh, in about the 1920s. And again, credit where credit's due, but also uh, if this dude has screwed up information, that's on him, not me. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so the first uh, little bit in the history of Zildjian in the U.S., they used this kind of stamp right here. They, he's calling this the the first pre-trans stamp. I'm not sure what the trans stamp means. <laughs> Uh, but this was the first stamp that they used in the U.S. factory. He does go into uh, whether or not there are three dots. And you will see the three dots uh, right in this area of the logo. Uh, it looks like they used this one a pretty wide span. From 1929 to 1946, they used this right here. He's not really giving me a size of this stamp that, like he does on some of these later stamps. He actually gets uh, pretty specific with some of the sizes. But the absence of these three dots on this part of the logo is one clue. Uh, he also talks a little bit about the lathing of the uh, of the symbols and also whether or not they're hand hammered. Uh, if you have a an eye for that sort of thing and you can see tell the difference between uh, machine hammering which is very consistent and uh, hand hammering, which is a little more inconsistent, uh, you know, a little more random, uh, then that helps you date them as well. Uh, they stopped hand hammering symbols by the mid 1960s. So I think that might be the thing to do first. We'll get the symbols, we'll take a look at them and we'll do some measurements on uh, and some get some close up shots of these logos. Uh, this symbol is one that uh, I already had in my collection and uh, I pulled it out basically out of the closet whenever I set up my first drum set. Okay, so there's a pretty good shot of uh, this logo here. And we'll po point out a couple of things. There was a logo around about the 1950s uh, where the, the, in the stamped Zildjian, the word itself, um, is kind of like an outline and it's kind of um, really easy to spot on that one. This is not that. But this does have those three dots. You can see these little three dots right here. So that's going to put it uh, squarely within a few ranges of, uh, of time. And we're going to also measure this logo. It says in his article, it talks about measurements, but it doesn't talk about whether those measurements are measuring from the top to the bottom which I'm assuming is the case, or whether it's side to side. So we'll start by measuring top to bottom. So this stamp, measured from the top, is about, it looks like it goes about an inch and a quarter. You can see right there, it's, I'm starting at three. Okay, um, this one from the uh, mid-1950s, this one going from 1954 to 1957, you can see right here that the Zildjian is in kind of a block lettering. So you see how it's kind of blocked out on this Zildjian lettering. So this is not what we have. Although this does have the three little dots right here, we don't have this block lettering. Um, and also it looks like this is a huge stamp. It's one and seven eighths inches. So that's almost two inches. That's very large. So it's not that one for sure. Let's look at 1957 to 1959. We see here there is no, uh, there are no three dots, so this is not us. Um, I think on vintage symbols, it's you're more likely to find one in within the '60s <clears throat> and '70s. Now, um, the previous stuff is a little more rare, I think. Uh, we do have three dots here from 1960 to 1969. Also of note here is that uh, the hand hammering uh, com pretty much completely g gets phased out by the middle of the decade. So again, anything after about 19, he doesn't really specify, but about 1965 or so, 
there might be some Zildjian historians who could nail this stuff down a little uh, a little more closely, but that's about as close as this guy goes. So he's talking about an inch and a half here in the size of the stamp, um, which is bigger than what we have. He says around one and three sixteenths inches. And I and that's not, you know, again, we're looking about, and that's a little bit less than what we have. I mean, I guess you could call that about three sixteenths if you wanted to. You know, one, two, three. Yeah, that's that is about three sixteenths. I you know, it's very possible that this one is a sixties. Um I mean, you tell me. Well, I'll, I'll put I'll put a screenshot of this side by side with the uh, stamp that I see online, and this this is looking to me like it could be 60s. We've got the three dots. This is about an inch and three sixteenths. Um, it says a round inch and three sixteenths, and I, I I concur with that measurement. Uh. Okay, the thin stamp. He's talking about thin stamp. But we'll, we'll we'll look at this one too. Okay, this one has no dots though. There's no dots on this one for 1970s. Uh, this is not a Constantinople stamp, obviously. Uh, 81 to 84. What's this? Co stamp. Co stamps are the last unique signatures on Zildjian models. They ran up to about 1994. Uh, before they introduced laser engraving. So after 1994, they introduced a, a system of dating. They actually stamp um, a couple of digits below the, the stamp also to indicate the year. And here are those digits, if you want, um, or those letters, if you want to compare something that you have. Yeah, I'm not sure on this one. You can see here uh, it says Zildjian Co., but there is no underline uh, like we have on this one. You see how it has a small O? It has a C, and it has a little O with the underline under the O. This one doesn't have that. So I think what we have here is a 1960s. Um, I'm not expert enough to tell whether or not this is hand-hammered. Um, I mean, maybe you could tell me. It... it You know, I, I don't know, genuinely. No idea. I do know it's a beautiful sounding symbol. Um, and I'm very happy to have it. But anyway, there's symbol number one. Let's check out symbol number two. So again, I th th think this one is uh, 1960s. Okay, um, this fellow sent me three, three 18 inch uh, Zildjian crashes. This one is a heavier crash. Um, very nice sounding symbol. Super sounding. Sounds big with a really a lot of sustain. And let's check out. Let's check out this stamp. So this one, um, it's really hard to see really well. Um, first things first, do we have dots? It looks like we do have dots. Or we have the hint of dots at least. One, two, three. I think this one, this one is definitely thinner. It's not as deeply stamped into the symbol. Um, but like I said, we do have the at least the suggestion. We do have definitely two dots and the suggestion of maybe a third dot. So I think this one does have the dots. Um, this one is not the CO version, so it's not a later one. Um, we have the O with the dash under it. So those are two clues. This might also be 60s. Let's measure it and see. Okay, so starting from the top, we go about the same as the other one um, about an inch and see so there's one inch and one two three sixteenths that's about what it looks like to me about an inch and three sixteenths 
So I would say that that dates this one to the um, 1960s as well. And just the fact that it has um, all of this patina, um, a little bit of keyholing like you would normally find on a an older 60s symbol because the you know again the stands of that day were not nearly as forgiving on the keyholes now we've got we've usually got some kind of nylon washers that go on the stands and um, it's a lot easier to take care of symbols now than it was back in the day okay here we have another one another 18 incher um, this one has a little bit more keyholing somebody really loved this one used it a lot and you can see why when you hear it I mean listen to that wash sounds fantastic uh, and this has a decidedly different stamp and it looks to me like it's deeper stamped um, you can just see that it's deeper in there Okay, we do have the three dot. I'm gonna have to zoom out because it's larger. It's a larger stamp as well. Okay. So this might be a 50s one. We do have the three dots. Um, we do have the slash under the C, under the O on the CO. Let me get this at a different angle so maybe you can see it a little bit better. I could probably even put something on this where it would get down you know you can see there's stuff down in the lettering makes it easier to see but uh, you can see how the stamp is a little bit more inconsistent so like right here for instance uh, ish we're only getting the kish from Turkish symbols you know we're only getting a hint of the tur um, same here and the maid you know we're not getting a very good M in the made but we get a really deep USA so that that tells me that this was somebody hand stamped this and they didn't have this sat flush maybe um, or maybe the stamp was wearing out you know so this who knows but you can clearly see the three dots there in that logo so let's measure it and that should give us a uh, a little bit more direction and again feel free man to grab your symbols uh, grab your zildjans and do this with me so this one clearly is an inch and a half you see that it goes all the way down to an inch and a half so this is decidedly bigger than that last one we had so let's look um, let's look at what that means over on the computer Okay, so some of these, let's see, models from later in the decade featured a stamp size of an inch and a half. So this could be late 60s. Um, defined by a bold Zildjian Co. embossing. Bold. I'm not sure how bold that is. I mean, you can barely even see the Zildjian Co., can you? You can barely even see it. Uh you know, obviously it's there, but this is not a 70, 70s one for sure because it has the three dots and it's not as thin. Okay, an inch and seven eighths is the is the the fifty four to fifty seven one. It's not that. That one has the three dots, and they say some of those don't have the blocks. Some of these do not. Not all large stamps will feature the block logo. But this is not a large stamp. This is an inch and a half. Uh, I think what we I think so far we're looking at late sixties. This trans stamp does not have the three dots, so it's not that it's not that age. And this one looks pretty um I think that I think we would know if it was this one. You could see by this how deep that stamp is. Yeah, that's. I think what we have here on this one um, is late '60s, according to uh, this guy. All right, here is the third and final 18-inch uh, crash that I got. A little bit of key holing on this one. Um, again, as with the other two, really nice sound.
tons of sustain. These are fantastic symbols. They really, really are. Let's find the logo on this one. Uh, where the heck is it? This one was all the way to the edge, wasn't it? I believe on this one. Yep, sure is. Uh, this one still has a little bit of writing on it, actually. This says medium thin crash. I'm just now noticing that. Okay, medium thin crash. So that's got a little bit of ink left. Um, and our stamped logo is, is way out here toward the, the edge. Let me zoom in because this is kind of a small one and it's hard to read. Okay, um, let's measure it. Uh, this one has no dots. I can already see that. No dots. Um, is this the big CO? I think it is, right? Does it have a big CO? Zildjian's, I can see the C, but... I can see the C. I can see the O, but I can't tell whether it's a... Yeah, it's a small O. It is a small O. I can see it. I can definitely see it off camera. It's got, it's it's hard to get a picture of it because you have to hit. It has to hit the light exactly. Uh, see right, the dots would be right there, and they're non-existent. The O is small, so it's an old. This is an older one. We barely have any uh, ink on there, but we do have a little bit of ink. We have medium thin crash still left on it, slightly. Um, so anyway, all right, let's look at what we've got then. Okay, so this is probably, I would say this is a 70s one. It says it's easier to confuse with the 50s, but it can be identified with the non-bold Zildjian Co. logo. And I think that's probably what we have here, This because this is a pretty thin Zildjian. See how thin that is? Um, so I, I believe this is 70s. Uh, as far as the size of it... Let's go top of there. It's really hard to see on this one where it ends. Really hard, actually. Impossibly hard. Yeah, this one's kind of an exercise in, in futility to try to figure out. Okay, so our fifth and final. This is the monster. This is the big 21-inch uh, ride. Um, there's no dots. And it looks like it has a thin, I can't see a big CO, the, the CO is missing. I just don't see it, it's not stamped. It's not stamped very well on that part of the stamp. Uh, we can see right here, there are no dots. They don't exist, let me see if I can tilt this up for you so you can see it a little easier. You see right there how it's empty, no dots. Um, and I cannot, you see how it says Zildjian, and you can't see any co over here. It just, it would have been there, but it just, the stamp didn't take, it didn't go deep enough. Fairly thin Zildjian there. So I'm thinking this is probably 70s, but um, let's measure it and just be sure. All right. From the top. That is one inch and about three sixteenths, wouldn't you say? So I would say that pretty much puts this around about the 1970s. Okay, so that'll do it. I hope you learned something like uh, I did. Um, if you have, hit subscribe down below, give me a thumbs up, and for now, we will see y'all later.